students so today i'll be discussing the fmg recall questions of december 2021 so before proceeding please remember these are recall questions we may not have the exact questions it's what you have told us so there may be slight variations in the options that we have put in here but broadly the idea would be to make you understand that what really could be the answer so even if there is a little variation in the options please pardon us because these are recall questions so one of the questions told to us was that what is true about psoriasis so all are true about psoriasis except so the different options were probably uh, kogogs microabscesses moon rose microabscesses uh, scaling some people said it's scratching or oil drop sign so i think uh, so of all the options that I got, obviously Kogog's microabscesses, Moonrose microabscesses and oil drop sign are seen. Even if there was a scaling in the option, that is also pretty much seen in psoriasis. What is not seen is scratching. So true about psoriasis is all about except scratching because we all know a psoriasis patient does not scratch. A lichen planus patient scratching, Zima patient scratch, but psoriasis patient is usually asymptomatic. So we have talked about psoriasis in great detail on uh, in our uh, e-gurukul notes. So we all know that on histopathology, we see hyperkeratosis, we see parakeratosis. Moon rose microabscesses given in the option is a histopathological uh, feature which shows collection of neutrophils and this collection is present in stratum corneum. Then we talked about stratum granulosum which is absent and then in malfigian layer, we have told you that there is presence of spongiform pustules of cogogs. So another uh, option which was there, which was spongiform pustules of cogogs, is another histopathological feature of psoriasis where we see collection of neutrophils and this is present in stratum spinosum or malfigian layer. So both of these are histopathological features. I'm not sure whether any other histopathological feature was given to you or not, but you also see club-shaped red edges or they may have given you a camel foot appearance of red ridges, which is another feature of psoriasis. Okay, and then there were different clinical features which may have been given to you. What I could get was scratching was one of the options and scratching is not seen in psoriasis. We told you this in our notes also that there is no itching. There is winter exacerbation. What do you see is basically an arythematous plaque which has a salmon pink color, which is well defined, which shows silvery white scales, which shows induration and there is a ring of worn off that can be seen but no itching no itching in nails you see pitting which is the most common sign then you can see ridging you can see neuconychia and you see oil drop sign which is the most characteristic feature of nail psoriasis okay so oil drop sign is a feature of psoriasis definitely a feature of psoriasis pitting is a feature of psoriasis in case they gave you that so all these are clinical and histopathological features i'm sure they had given you options based on this so out of these the best option would be scratching which is usually not seen okay the second question was lichen planus is not associated with which of the following so lichen planus again so psoriasis and now next was lichen planus lichen planus is not associated with Wickham's tie, we know it's a feature of lichen planus. What is Wickham's tie? You put us some oil and you see it under a magnifying glass. You see that there are whitish streaks that you may see in a patch of lichen planus or a plaque of lichen planus. That's because of hypergranulosis. That's because of hypergranulosis. So yes, this is seen. Hepatitis C virus, hepatitis B virus are known to be associated with lichen planus. In fact, a patient of lichen planus, we always test them for these two things. Sawtooth appearance of, it should be retiregis. So sawtooth appearance of retiregis is a histopathological feature of lichen planus. Moon rose microabscesses is not a feature of lichen planus. We just discussed that it is a histopathological feature of psoriasis. So moon rose microabscesses, you do not see in lichen planus. And so that should be the correct answer. 
So in like and plainness, we have talked about all of this. I think there were question which was directly from this. So we talked that there are unknown antigens and there are external agents which may act as antigens. And in that external agents, infections like HCV, HBV, they form an important agent. Then various drugs can act as an external agent which is stimulating my immune response. Then there can be various contact allergens like dental amalgams. In patients who have dental amalgams, they have high chances of getting oral lichen planus. Then in clinical examination, you see Kobner's phenomena and you see Wickham's trial. This is all from your notes. So you, if you've studied this, I'm sure you must have cracked this exam well. So Wickham's trial is this white lacy pattern that you see on LP lesions. This is because of hypergranulosis. Then in oral mucosa, again, you see these whitish lacy lesions and there may be history of dental amalgam. If you see the histopath, histopath, in, we have talked about that there are hyperkeratosis, there is wedge-shaped hypergranulosis, there is echinthosis, there is basal cell degeneration, and there are apoptotic keratinocytes, and there is sawtooth reteriges. The reteriges are sawtooth in cases of in cases of lichen planus patients. Moonrose microabscesses is a collection of neutrophils, and that is seen in patient of psoriasis. Okay, so in this, if these were the options, the correct answer would be Munro's microabscesses. The next question was contact dermatitis is caused by which plant? Which plant causes contact dermatitis? So, so here I'm not sure about all the options because you could not give, but there was one option which was Parthenium. If Parthenium was there in the option, that clearly is the answer. So when we have talked about contact dermatitis, we talked about that there are certain phytodermatitis, there are certain plants which can cause contact allergic dermatitis and the most important plant causing contact allergic dermatitis is Parthenium hysterophorus or Congress grass. Parthenium hysterophorus or con Congress grass. So if they have asked you specifically about a plant which is acting as a contact allergen and there was Parthenium hysterophorus in the question, please mark that. I hope you mark that as the answer. So Parthenium hysterophorus, also called as Congress grass or wild grass, is a very it's the most common cause of phytodermatitis in India. The allergen which is there in it is sesquipteron lecton, sesquipteron lecton. So this was there from your notes again. And uh, so these were the different other allergens in case they had not talked about plant. So that is what you told us. So but in case they did not talk about plant and they're talking about contact allergens in general, then also there was a list which was there that in the metals, nickel is the most common cause. Then there are cosmetics, there are chromates, there is rubber, there are cosmetics, lipstick, nail polish and hair gels. All this can act as contact allergens. But I think in the question they are specifically about a plant allergen and that would be Parthenium hysterophorus. Okay. Okay. Next question was, a young lady visited her physician as she was unable to tolerate sunlight. The doctor noted a specific rash which is illustrated in the image. So there is a history of photosensitivity and there is a rash. If you look at the rash, it is very, very typical of malar rash. It is centrofacial butterfly rash that you can see. So I have a history of photosensitivity and I have an image of malar rash. The patient mentioned a drug was given to her by a specialist by, which was also used when she fell ill for malaria. So that means what drug is used? We all know that in SLE we use HCQS or hydroxychloroquine and this is also used in malaria. Chloroquine is also used for malaria. Very simple. So what is the condition the doctor is diagnosed? So there is history of photosensitivity, there is a history of malarash, and there is a history of use of HCQS. Very, very direct, very, very clear hints that it is a case of SLE. Because we know SLE presence with malarash, SLE has photosensitivity, and we give uh, anti-malarials for uh, SLE. Clear? 
So we have talked about it again from your notes only that ACLE or acute cutaneous LE is associated with photosensitivity. There is this typical malar rash which spares the nasolabial fold which has butterfly rash and in treatment we talked about sun protection, giving corticosteroids and giving anti-malarials. So all this was there in your question. So here the answer would be SLE. Okay, a patient comes to your PHC to show a genital ulcer. It's a primary health care center. To diagnose his condition, what would you do in this low resource setting? So if you're sitting in a PHC, you're not in a tertiary center and a patient has come to you with a genital ulcer. Okay, so one, the first thing you would do is obviously clinical examination. We've talked about different uh, features in clinical examination which can help you differentiate whether it is painful, painless, indurated, non-indurated, all of this you can do. So I think that if in the, uh, in the question, in the options, anywhere clinical examination would have been the option, that would be my best choice. But I think that was not there. So what they had given you were different investigations that you can perform in low resource settings. So if I look at the investigations, the only investigation which is possible in a primary healthcare center is usually a direct microscopy or uh, you can do basically a gram stain also. But a dark ground microscopy, doing ELISA, sending for culture, all this is not possible. So you can definitely have a microscope in a PHC and you can try to do a direct microscopy or you can try to stain it with gram stain and do a direct microscopy. So here the answer should be direct microscopy. So you have to understand that genital ulcer, we do all of this. But again, they are giving you a setting of a primary healthcare center where you would be able to do a basic minimum test, a basic minimum test. Now, my major organisms are syphilis, which you can differentiate if it's a painless indulated ulcer, you know it is syphilis. If it is a painful ulcer, then it can be chancroid, it can be herpes if there is a short incubation period. So in that case, you do a direct microscopy. If you see gram-negative cocobacilli, you know it is chancroid. And if you do a Zang smear, you can figure out whether it is herpes or not. So by doing a direct microscopy and using simple stains like Grams and Zang, you can still differentiate if you're sitting in a PHC. But you cannot do a dark field. For dark field microscopy, you need a dark field microscope. Sending for cultures, then doing ELISA, all this is not available in a PHC. Okay, so by best answer would be direct microscopy. Now, after resection of a lipoma, a patient developed a growth. At the site of the scar, it was itchy and burning. So what is my most likely diagnosis now? There was an excision which was done and patient developed a growth. Ideally, I do not think they would be giving you both hypertrophic scar and keloid in this option because it would become a little confusing to you. But in case they did, then please refer to it here. So we talked about it. Keloid is basically a crab or claw-like growth which spreads beyond the original margin. So might be if they had given you keloid or hypertrophic scar, they would have told you that after a section of lipoma, there was a growth which formed which spread beyond the original margin. If that was there, you can be sure it is keloid. If they said it is not spreading the margin, then you are also sure whether it is hypertrophic scar. But if this information was not given to you, if this information was not given to you, then please refer to this table that hypertrophic scarring is seen in 40 to 70 percent of patients following surgery. So again, I will repeat in the question, if they had given to you that the scar is extending beyond the margin of the original surgical incision, you mark keloid. If it is mentioning it is within, within the, uh, uh, it did not spread beyond the surgical incision, it is hypertrophic scar. But if none of this information was given to you and you were just given that the surgery was done, a growth formed, whether it is hypertrophic scar or keloid, then there you would mark hypertrophic scar as an answer because the incidence of hypertrophic scar post any surgical operation is much, much more than that of a keloid. Remember this, okay? So if it is extending beyond the margin, it is keloid. If it is not extending, it's hypertrophic scar. But if that information is no, was not given to you, then please mark hypertrophic scar in such a question because it is more common to see hypertrophic scar following a surgery. Done? 
Now, causative organism for LGV is which of the following? Not at all a difficult question. We all know LGV is caused by chlamydia and we have studied about it. So, there is no question here. T. pallidum we know causes syphilis. Herpes simplex will cause herpes. And Klebsiella granulomatis was caused donovanosis. So, chlamydia causes LGV and we all know that, we all know that, we have studied about it, that LGV is caused by chlamydia, which is chlamydia trichomatis, L1, L2, L3, okay. That were the recall questions that we received from you and uh, I think the questions were simple and I am sure you must have cracked it all. Thank you.